Okay, welcome to video three in our series to create a uh, Q&A chatbot using the various features of Office 365 and Azure. So I decided to combine videos three and four because video three would just be about creating a list in SharePoint and uh, that seemed like a little too little uh, content to put into a video. So in this video we're going to be creating a list in SharePoint that holds our responses for our chatbot as well as we're going to be creating a logic app that will be used to call into and read from that SharePoint list. So here we are in our SharePoint site and I am going to create a new list. So let's add an app and I'm going to create a custom list and we'll give it a name of FAQ. So let's create that. Now let's go into our list. I'm going to add a column to this list. It's going to be a multiple line of text column. I'm going to give it the name of FAQ because this is the response to a frequently asked question. It's going to be a multiple lines of text field and we are going to make it uh, use enhanced rich text. Why not? Let's make it look nice. And then we'll save that. Okay, so we now have our list created. That's all there is to it. And so we now need to actually put in responses for those intents that we had from Lewis. So if we jump back over to Lewis and we go and manage our Lewis app, we can see the intents that we have. We have an intent called greeting, an intent called none, and an intent called who should attend. So we can come back into our SharePoint list, we can create a new entry, and we can create an entry for the intent greeting. And this is now what do we want to say whenever somebody uh, says hello? Well, we want our bot to respond with, um, howdy, it's good to see you. Okay, that's what our response is gonna be when someone says hello. Uh, we can even add some rich text to it so we can make it you know big if we want to let's go ahead and make it big just so you can see that um, and then we can save that but this this can be a lot of information it can be a little bit of information you can add as much as you want to to it so we've created an entry for the greeting let's create another one for who should attend who should attend and then for that one let's go back to that Microsoft Ignite fact and uh, there's not much of an answer there, but let's just go ahead and copy what they have there and put that as our response for who should attend. And then we can save that. And then there was one more intent and that was for none. And that's kind of nothing else matches. So let's put in a new entry for that where the intent was none. And then the response could be I'm so sorry, I don't know what you are asking. And we can save that one. Okay, so the way this would work, again, for every intent that you created in Lewis, you would create a corresponding entry in this list where the title field is the name of the intent from Lewis and the content of the FAQ field is what do you want to present back to the user. So we've got our SharePoint list created. We've got some content in that list. So now let's go build a logic app that can read into the SharePoint list and pull back one of those entries from the FAQ list. So I'm going to jump over here into our Azure portal again. I'm going to be creating a resource. And under the web resources, I'm going to be creating a logic app. Let's give this logic app a name. We'll call it get bot response create a new resource group hillbilly bot it's going to be in central us let's just use the existing hillbilly bot then and let's create that so for those of you who haven't created a logic app before uh, but maybe you have created a flow before you, this is going to look very very 
uh, familiar to you, surprisingly familiar. I actually myself didn't know how familiar it was until I went and did it the first time. And I'm like, why haven't I done this before? This is this is crazy easy. So let's go to our resource. And under our resources, you can see our resource res, uh, logic app we created called Get Bot Response. So this is going to take us into the Logic Apps Designer, where we can come through and we can start building our bot. And again, this looks extremely familiar to Flow. In fact, you could use Flow instead of a Logic App if you want to for what we're doing here. Um, I decided to, to use a Logic App because of the fact that the uh, when HTTP request is received trigger is going to become a premium feature in Flow. Uh, so I wanted to use it as a Logic App instead. There is a charge for a Logic App, um, but it's based on a per action fee. And based upon my math, if it's correct, um, executing 10,000 iterations of this Logic App would cost about uh, 17 and a half cents. So it's, it's pretty cost effective. So the trigger for our Logic App, going getting back to where we're supposed to be doing, the trigger for our Logic App is going to be when an HTTP request is received. So let's click on that trigger. And we need to uh, be passing in some information to this trigger. We need to pass in what the intent is that we got from Lewis. So let's go ahead and create the JSON object for that intent using a sample payload. So we're going to have a value for our intent and it's going to have something like none. And what this does, based upon this example JSON payload, it's going to create the schema we need for the body of the HTTP post. Okay. Uh, the next thing we want to do is after someone calls this HTTP request passing in an intent, I want to pass that intent as a query to that SharePoint list. So I'm going to add a step here and I'm going to do search for get items and we can see that we have some SharePoint actions here and I need the SharePoint get items. It's prompting me to sign in so I'm going to sign into that site Now I need to give it the URL to that site, and that site was our slash demo site. The name of our list was the FAQ list, and I need to do a filter query. Okay, so now that we select we want to do a filter query, we have to actually create that filter query. And our filter, if you remember from our list, the intent is going to be the title field. So in the logic app, I need to do a filter where when the title where the title field is equal to the intent. And this is coming from that HTTP call. Okay? And that's all there is to that. So now when a user calls this H uh, makes a HTTP request, they pass in an intent. We're going to query that FAQ list from the demo site. And we're only going to return the entry where the title uh, is equal to intent. I'm actually going to add a top count one here parameter as well because I only want to return one entry because that's all we need. Just make sure that happens. Okay, so now we're going to add a new step. So now that we've got that value, we need to return it back to the uh, need to re re need to respond with a value. So I'm going to do a response, and then I am going to set our headers. to the value of our headers and the body is going to be the list of items. Okay? And that's all there is to that. We got two actions here and our trigger is for when an HTTP request is received. So just to walk you through this one more time, when an HTTP request is received and a user passes in an intent, we are going to query the FAQ list where the title field is equal to the value of that intent. We're going to return the first result that it finds, and then we're going to respond with that uh, item that was returned from that query. Okay? So now we can save this. When we save this, it generates our post 
endpoint URL so we can copy that and now we can take this to our JavaScript that we've been adding to uh, from the first couple of videos so if we go back to our JavaScript here this is going to be essentially the same uh, script we had before it's just a really ugly uh, it's a text box for a query uh, we now have instead of calling this span a log span we're calling it a response span because it's actually going to hold a response uh, when the user presses enter in that text box we are going to call into Lewis with that question and that question is going to be returned and we're going to determine their intent and then when we have that intent we are now going to call this other function called get FAQ so if we look at that get FAQ function uh, we're going to pass in that intent keyword and then we've got the URL to our logic app so let's just paste in that URL that we got from our logic app it's going to do a post uh, we're setting we're passing in the intent which is that keyword that gets passed in and then when the call is done this is uh, going to be a promise because it is an asynchronous call so when the call is done we're going to resolve our call where we pass in the FAQ field from that result set with the FAQ we know is the name of the list field in our SharePoint list FAQ it's that right there this FAQ corresponds to this entry that we're returning back from that query okay so then when we get that FAQ we are going to simply put the HTML in this response with an ID of response it is no longer a log the response HTML is going to be the response we get back from the SharePoint list for the intent okay all that makes sense clear as mud so now we can save that we can come back to our website so let's go to our website that we had before the storage account hillbilly but go to the static website go to the web We can upload the new file. And I forgot to check the overwrite. Check the overwrite and upload the file again. And now we can go back to our website. So let's copy that endpoint, paste it. And if I didn't screw anything up, when a user types in a question, you can say hello. And it says howdy it's good to see you so that came from our FAQ list in SharePoint so if I type in who should attend yeah Microsoft Ignite is geared for IT implementers so there's that there's that response for who should attend as well so pretty much we have a functioning chatbot now now it's just all up to adding some really nice CSS in it HTML to make this look all nice and pretty and then adding a lot more content to your FAQ list as well as your intents within Lewis but you can see how you could uh, create a very immersive experience for your users uh, that since we're using a rich text box for the response that could be pictures and links and uh, you could do a lot with that so in the final video we're going to do we're going to take this chatbot and we are going to put it within teams and within the context of teams all right.